What's up guys, I'm Matt Gary, and in this 16th episode of the Separation of Concerns and Apex Common Tutorial Series, we're going to go over why separation of concerns is so important when it comes to unit testing. All right guys, so welcome to the 16th episode of the Separation of Concerns in Apex Common Tutorial Series where we are going to go over the importance of separation of concerns as it relates to being able to do unit testing in your org. So um, this is pretty simple. Without the concept of separation of concerns, unit testing really can't be brought into play. It can't be made a reality. And um, the reason that this is the case is because unit testing depends on the concept of uh, mocking or creating fake versions of classes to pass to the class that you're actually testing, right? So uh, what do I mean by that? Uh, there, are, there are ways to create fake versions of your uh, class like say for instance let me just explain this a bit the separation of concerns class is the one that we're actually going to be testing for real the class that we want to actually test the logic of but this separation of concerns class depends on this domain layer class and this selector layer class to get its job done well um, what we can do to make sure that we're not also testing the logic in these classes, so we're not doing a, a uh, inter an integration test, what we can do is use the concept of dependency injection, or basically just passing in instances of this class through the constructor. Um, and what that in turn allows us to do is pass in for tests fake versions of these classes that will return fake results to uh, or for our unit tests. So uh, we'll go over this in a little bit more detail. And if you're confused why you would want to do fake versions of these classes, go back one episode, really listen to it, and then come back to this one because it's going to make a whole lot more sense. Um, but without separation of concerns and without separating out you know your different layers uh, the selector layer the domain layer all that kind of stuff this you just can't do you really just can't do unit testing it's not possible so let me show you what I mean by you can't do unit testing I've got this no separation no separation of concerns class right and in this class I have literally the same going same thing going on I've got an update accounts method there. I've got an update accounts method here. But this one just calls a couple of, it calls a selector layer to select things and it calls a domain layer class to update the account type. And in this one, we're doing it all here in this one class, right? So I don't call this a selector layer. I just select my, my um, list of accounts inline and then I make my updates to the account in line and that's it right all of my stuff is housed here in this one class if I want to reuse it I've just got to come to this class and deal with it that way um, well if I want to reuse it I basically can't anyway there's no depend there's no way to do dependency injection here there's no separation of layers or anything none of that so if we go take a look at its test class over here um, you can see that there's there's no unit testing. If you've never done unit testing right, you're probably like, well, what? I don't even know what it is yet. But we'll see. We'll see it in just a second. Um, you're actually having to create a real new account and insert it into the database in the test setup, and then you're actually having to query for that account, and then you basically call that no SOC update accounts class where you're actually querying again and you're actually updating again 
for real. And that's it. There's no there's no concept of mocking or just doing the unit tests. We are testing all the things, right? We're testing whether or not this query to the system actually works. We're testing this update to the system is truly working. And really that's not what we're trying to test in a unit test. We're trying to test, you know, does this logic does this logical path make sense or like will this happen in given scenario a b c right we're not really trying to test whether or not this query reaches out to the system and gives us real results or whether this update does um but in our separation of concerns class where we have this uh these um concerns separated out into the different layers so we've got a domain layer we've got a selector layer and then where where we're using this dependency injection where this is a little confusing a normal implementation of this class outside the context of a of a um, test doesn't really need dependency injection so we just have this empty constructor that then calls the private one this test visible one and um, sets the class basically sets up a new instance of those classes and <clears throat> through the use of this private um, constructor here we can we can leverage dependency injection and set up fake versions of our classes uh, and then those fake versions of our classes when we actually test this method here in just a bit this they will return fake results that will allow us to test whether if this was empty it threw an exception or if this wasn't empty did it actually return a list right so it'll allow us to test our just our logical paths within this method and not whether or not we selected things truly successfully or we um, updated things successfully because they're, they're not actually relevant for this unit test so um, over here we have a separation of separation of concerns class test and we're gonna go over this a whole lot more in detail in the next episode um, so if you're a little lost here don't don't worry too much about it but I just want to show you what's going on so you kind of understand how this works um, we're creating a fake ID for an account object then we're creating a new list of accounts using that fake ID. And then we're creating a fake updated list of accounts to have returned to us as well. <clears throat> so um, after we create our fake data so that we're never actually truly inserting anything and taking a whole bunch of time, uh, the next thing that we will do is create our mocks or our fake versions of our classes so we've got our um, fake accounts domain class and basically here more or less we're creating a fake instance of that class to use and then we've got a fake instance of our selector class doing the same thing and then we use this concept of stubbing and stubbing just means hey I'm gonna create fake return responses from methods um, so that when our class that we're actually testing calls these methods it gets something returned to it so um, we can say when the mock selector select by ID method is called which it gets called right here in the class that we're going to test then return this fake list of accounts and when the mock domains update account type account list is called then return this updated account list and then stop stubbing so stop creating those fake responses for the time being <laughs> then we are going to actually do our real test where we call the real uh, this real method in this class so this isn't fake this is the real one that we're truly testing the logic of and um, then we're gonna be able to do a bunch of things like 
we can still do system asserts to see if the prospect you know got updated uh, appropriately and then we can do new things that we are not able to do in a normal test like verify whether a method um, on a fake class was ever called or verify that this method was indeed called um, so there's a lot of interesting new things you can do to verify all these logical paths and we'll go over more of them in depth but as you can see right um, without going too far in depth we have to have this ability to make fake versions of our classes that we're dependent on to be able to do unit testing um, and you can see here that we are using that concept of dependency injection where we pass in our fake mock domain and our fake selector right which that ends up being sent here to this private test visible constructor where we assign this domain layer class and selector layer class the um, fake instances of them right so I know that this it may be difficult to understand uh, at this moment in time, but to be able to create fake results and to be able to focus solely on the logic of our method in this class instead of the logic of these other classes, we have to have a way to do, you know, some kind of dependency injection to pass in these fake versions of the class that these classes that um, the separation of concerns class depends on to get its job done. If you don't have that kind of stuff set up, then as you can see, there's no way to pass in fake versions of anything or fake anything. So uh, you're just kind of stuck with integration tests forever. And um, you'll see that eventually that will slow you down quite a bit. Um, I think that's mostly it. There's one thing that's worth mentioning here. I'm showing you how to do this for unit testing in general, but if you're using the Apex Common Library, you actually, as we'll see in the next episode, you are not required to do dependency injection. So this whole thing just disappears. And you use this application factory here to set your mock. Um, and we'll go over that a bit in the next episode. But I just wanted to point that out. If you're not using Apex Common, uh, the Apex Common Library, and you want to use different things, then you do have to do dependency injection for every class. If you are using Apex Common and you are using this application factory, then the, you have a, another option that's uh, quite a bit easier to deal with. So, um, yeah. I think, I think that ought to do it. Um, if you want more information on this stuff, like I've said in the last handful of uh, episodes, definitely check out the uh, wiki article that I've got going over this, or the blog post, because I made blog posts for all these two. Uh, there's also some tips, I guess, on how to transition your existing code base to start leveraging separation of concerns and, and unit test mocking. Um, because the older your org is, if you didn't do this to begin with, the harder it is to transition to something like this. So, yeah. Um, that's got to be it. Now, we've got one more episode left. Hopefully I've answered most of your questions and everything's starting to fall into place. If I haven't, then I'm sorry. Feel free to ask me more questions. Or submit an issue here and tell me that I suck and I need to put more information in one of these. Um, <laughs> in the last video, our last episode of this series, we are going to go over implementing mock unit tests with the Apex Mocks library. And we'll also go over how to, um, you know, the special scenarios that you can use with if you also use the Apex Common Library. So that's it. Hopefully all this made sense. If it didn't, certainly leave me comments, and I will try to get to them and answer them as soon as I can. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.